Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna to be doing a beautiful pink gypsy leopard swirl design. Now I know what you're thinking. I've already done a lot of gypsy leopard tutorials on my channel, but I really wanted this video to serve more as like an inspiration type video rather than a tutorial because I know we've gone over this a few times, but I just, okay, so pink is one of my favorite colors and I packed about every shade of pink onto this cup that I possibly could and I love how it came together. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video. I'm gonna have all the products that you see listed down below in the description box as well as some discount codes for you guys. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss a video. I upload twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday. And also, if you guys are looking for some help with tumbler making and you're new to this craft, be sure to join my Flynn Sisters community group. That's a free group on Facebook where you can get some support from the community. You can connect with me. You could share your work from my tutorials. We have a lot of fun in there. And again, that's listed down below in the description box. Okay, you guys, that's definitely enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, you wanna pick out all your different glitter colors, micas, pigments, vinyl colors, base paint colors. If you guys want to use the same exact colors and products that I used in this video, I'm gonna have them all linked down below in the description box. And I might even have some discount codes for you there as well. And the first thing that we wanna do with our cup is prep it. I prep my cups using the final sand paste along with a maroon scouring pad and then I spray paint it using this really pretty pink swirl design. I'm going to link a video down below that shows you how I prep my cups using the final sand product and it'll also link a video on how I spray paint this particular kind of swirl design and I will list the spray paint colors that I used as well. I didn't film this part in the video because I've already gone over this technique a couple different times in some other videos. Next, after my spray paint has dried, which shouldn't take too long because I put it in front of a small space heater to dry, uh, we're going to apply our epoxy to apply our glitter. And my cup should be warm to the touch. That's going to really help get your epoxy to spread nice and thin and evenly and ensure that you're using less than one milliliter of epoxy to cover the whole cup. The way I do this usually is I mix five milliliters of epoxy and then I usually just dip my finger in and use less than one milliliter of epoxy. When I make these kind of glitter swirls, I always start with the chunkiest colors first and kind of lightly sprinkle them on. And what I'm gonna be doing in the first few steps here is laying down what will be kind of the rough draft of our swirl. Because I use epoxy method to apply my glitter, I can really take my time and add up a lot of different layers with my glitter to create a really like deep dimensional look. So I started with uh, baby violet from peachy olive glitters and if you can't find that you can also use lassie and then I kind of filled in some of the empty spots with loss for words which is another light pink glitter and then I sprinkled in a little bit of celebrate you guys definitely don't have to use as many colors as I do. I just really love the look of layering a ton of different colors and cuts in my epoxy um, for this glitter layer because I just, it's fun, <laughs> number one. But number two, it creates a really beautiful and unique look that I like a lot. Over the kind of darker sprays that I did, I laid down a little bit of Blushing Bride, which is a beautiful like mauve rosy pink and I filled in some of the spots from that with Sonnet, which is a finer pink mix. It's got a whole bunch of really beautiful colors in it. And when you're doing these finer colors over the chunky colors, you really wanna sprinkle lightly. You know, give yourself some distance from the cup and just lightly tap them on. For this really hot pink area, I'm using Cool Mom, which is kind of a chunkier version of Wednesdays, which is another really pretty hot pink. And 
we're still lightly sprinkling at this point. We're not going to let it rip quite yet because again, we're still just laying down that rough draft for our design. So really, I just continue to build up colors and layer them through the swirl. I like to back up some of my chunkier glitters with the sister cut or the fin finer cut version of those colors to just fill in any gaps and really make sure that I have good coverage. Um, once I get to the end there and I have all my colors where I want, that's when I really start going back over everything a lot heavier to make sure that I get, you know, perfect coverage throughout and really try to look in good lighting to make sure I didn't miss a spot. All right, so I'm pretty satisfied with what I have going on here. I've got good coverage throughout all my colors. I've got good blending. So I'm just gonna tap off all this excess glitter here. I'm gonna toss what I've got there cause it's all mixed. Um, and then I'm gonna take Bright, which is an extra fine, super sparkly white glitter from Peachy Olive Glitters. And I'm gonna really let that rip all over the entire cup. This is going to ensure that I have absolutely no missed spots but it's also going to help kind of create the illusion of more blending be between all of my colors. Anytime I'm doing a lighter swirl like this, I like to finish it off with a fine white glitter just to make sure I've filled in everything. After this is dried for two to three hours, I'm gonna seal it with Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray, and I'm gonna move into my first coat of epoxy. All right, so for my first coat of epoxy on this cup, I mixed 45 milliliters of epoxy, which is pretty standard for me for a 30 ounce traditional tumbler like this. And I'm going to apply this first coat of epoxy and I'm gonna let it dry for four to six hours. All right, so that first coat of epoxy has been drying for about six hours and I'm ready to start applying my second coat. I've already mixed 30 milliliters of epoxy and I'm going to pour like five milliliters of it into two different medicine cups. So five into this one and five into this other one. And then we're going to apply the remaining 20 milliliters of that cup of epoxy onto our tumbler here. And I'm just gonna make sure I spread it on there nice and evenly. And once I've got my cup fully coated, I'm gonna hit it with a torch at this time to make sure I pop all my bubbles. All right, and my epoxy has been torched, it's smoothed out, it's looking good, and we're going to mix in our colorants in micas. So for this first one, I'm gonna use two teeny drops of Alumalite white dye, and then I'm going to use a pea-sized amount of this Diva Pink Apple Barrel acrylic paint. It's like we don't really want this full force pink. <laughs> we want a very tiny bit of it because what I want to create is kind of like a light candy pink. And I could just use candy pink acrylic paint, but I just didn't have the right shade that I wanted. So it's a very specific shade I wanted. So I created it just using that white dye and that very small amount of paint. In my other pot of epoxy, I'm going to use Tragic Tulip Mica. This is a neon pigment powder from Simply Sarah's Custom Creations. I'll have a link for this down below. And again, we're just using a pea-sized amount. 
and mixing it really thoroughly into our epoxy. This neon pigment powder stuff, it tends to be, I don't know how to say, it tends to like kind of have little clumps to it sometimes. So you really want to make sure that you mix that up well in your epoxy. To apply those colors onto my cup, I'm just going to use a gloved hand. I tried to use like a fancy silicone tool to put them on the cup, but I just don't like the way it looks and I feel like I have so much more control with my fingertips. So I quickly <laughs> put that tool down and did it how I normally would with my glove. See here how I accidentally spilled some of that light pink onto the cup? I just wiped that off with a gloved hand. If you're finding that it's a little hard to wipe the, um, you know, colored epoxy off of your cup there, just get your epoxy a little bit warm with a torch really quick and it should be easier to wipe off if you're having trouble with that. For this particular design, I wanted a very subtle amount of colorant in my epoxy. Like, I didn't want this to be like real obvious marbling on the cup. I just wanted some real subtle detail and to add some depth to my design. So you'll see in the video that I add some and then I take it away and then I add some and I take it away. I just wanted a very, very small amount and a subtle look for this design. Okay, and once I'm happy with how all that marbling looks, I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of this chunky opal white glitter. This is called Flory from Peachy Olive Glitters. It's one of my favorite glitters to sprinkle into marble glitter designs like this. And you're just gonna use your fingers to add a little pinch here and there. I usually like to add the glitter in the same lines that I did the marbling. All right, and so then we're going to allow that coat to dry for 8 to 12 hours, and then I will go directly into a third coat of epoxy. This particular third coat was a little less than 20 milliliters of epoxy. Once I got that on there, I hit it with my torch really quick, and I let that coat dry for 8 to 12 hours before we moved on to our sanding. All right, and I sanded my cup really well already. I'm not gonna cover that in this video because I go over it a lot in videos and it's just really kind of boring. So anyway, my cup is nice and smooth. Make sure it's super smooth before you move on to decals. I've already cut my decals also. And you guys, I promise you, I am working on a new decal layering video where I show you how to offset your fonts, just like I did here with this Caroline decal. And when I apply these large larger name decals to traditional cups that have a curve through the middle. I like to cut slits in the middle of the decal to help me maneuver around that curve. Okay, and then as usual, I just like to pull the paper off before I go to transfer my decal to make sure that it transfers drama free once I get it on the cup. And I also like to cut off a little bit of my paper backing here to expose some like of an overlap of my transfer tape. So I can kind of use that as an anchor. So I position the decal a little easier once it's on the cup. Okay, and at some point around the curve of this cup while I'm transferring, I feel like I need some more like maneuverability here or whatever that word is. I'm just going to cut some more slits into my transfer tape to really help me get that middle part of the decal to smooth out nicely around that curved middle part. Okay, and then once everything's laid on there nicely, I'm going to remove my transfer tape by holding it as tightly to the cup as possible while pulling it back to help reduce some bubbles. For the spots, I'm going to lay them all by hand just so I can kind of control the flow. And when I'm laying these spots, I try to lay them spaced apart similarly to how they're spaced apart in the pattern when they're cut. So if you look at how they're all laid out, 
after I've cut and weeded them. That's similar to how I want to lay them out when I place them by hand on the cup. We're just going to be putting them into like a swirl kind of design. So there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it other than that. And it's just a little bit time consuming, but really I got all these spots on the cup in less than 15 minutes. So it's not too bad. I also added a couple extra spots around the corner of her name just to add some extra detail. And I just absolutely love how this looks. All right, so I've got all my decals on there and I'm ready to seal my decals. For this cup, I'm using Quick Coat from Counter Culture to seal my decals. I like using Quick Coat because it has UV stabilizers in it, it dries quickly, and it works really nicely for sealing this type of metallic vinyl. I get a lot of questions about sealing vinyl and what kind of sealers to use. You can use polyacrylic, you can use clear spray paint, whatever works best for you. I can't confirm or deny if polyacrylic is better than Quick Coat because I've never really used polyacrylic to seal decals on cups but I know a lot of you have and have had great success with it so if you'd like to use that instead of the quick coat it's definitely a cheaper alternative I just prefer this particular product because I have it <laughs> and it works good for me so I'm gonna keep I'm just gonna keep using it so anyway I cover the whole cup with this product using a gloved hand and let it turn to dry it only takes about a half hour to dry and you want to make sure that this sealing product no matter what you use is completely bone dry before you move into your final coats of epoxy all right and so now we're gonna just apply our final coats of epoxy this particular cup required two final coats before it was completely smooth, and that was it. I was done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I absolutely love how this cup turned out. Normally, I wouldn't do a whole tutorial on just kind of a random cup like this, but I was so obsessed with how this came out. Pink is one of my favorite colors, and I was just, I was thrilled with this cup. I love it. It's definitely one of like my top 10 favorite cups I've ever made. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you liked our video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Hit that bell button so you don't miss a video. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you soon. Oh, and if you guys want a tutorial on how I made this super cute little matching keychain, let me know in the comments. I was thinking about whether or not we do a video for this, but I'm not sure. So let me know if you want to see that and we'll do that too. this video you could check out our last video here also be sure to find us on instagram facebook pinterest and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every wednesday and saturday thanks so much for watching see you soon